Welcome back, everyone. It is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today, back again with another educational cryptocurrency tutorial. Today, we're going to be going over Binance Basics lesson number two, which we're going to be going over trade pairs, time frames, and candlestick charts. So if you haven't already watched the first video of this series where we show you how to open up your Binance US account as well as navigate the basic interface of the exchange, then make sure to go watch that first and get your account set up. You can do that by going to our website, idahocryptogroup.com and click open a Binance account here. Click sign up now. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna take you to sign up for Binance.us using our referral code. And if you guys do sign up using our referral code, it gives you guys $10 in free Bitcoin as well as us. So if you do enjoy the content we're making, uh, please use our referral referral code so we can keep continuing to make these types of videos for you guys so again you can go to our website and click that or click the link in the description below and it will get you signed up with our referral code so again like i said last week we already went over how to get your account set up and how to kind of navigate this main interface here um, in the last video we got a little bit of money into our account so we showed you how to do that but now we're going to be going over all of this information here we're not quite going to be going over orders and the order book yet that will be in the next video um, but today we're going to be going over what all of this means in here as well as what all these trade pairs are and what all these time frames mean so let's hop right into it so to get here if you're on your main page here you need to hover over the trade tab here and then click advanced trading and what that's going to do is take you to this advanced trading page and by default it should open up here on the bitcoin slash us dollar chart um, so as you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here and when you first get into this it can be a little bit overwhelming um, the first thing you're going to want to do if your thing's set to original here um, right here you're going to want to make sure to hit the trading view version and what that does it just gives you a little better of charting tools and a little bit better of a visual of what's actually going on inside of these uh, candlesticks um, so as you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here because I've already done some technical analysis making these lines trend lines um, support and resistance and that's all things we'll be learning in future videos so I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of those first um, so we just have our candlestick chart here um, so first we need to understand what a trade pair is and so by default I'm here on the Bitcoin slash US dollar trade trade pair. And basically what this is telling us right here, if we were to buy this trade pair is that if we were to buy this, we are going to be buying Bitcoin with US dollars. Or if we were selling this trade pair, we would be selling Bitcoin for US dollars. So let's say theoretically, I wanted to buy one Bitcoin right now, you can buy like a 0 0.0001 of a Bitcoin, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Um, but let's say theoretically, I wanted to buy one whole Bitcoin, I would need $21,361.79 in US dollar in my account. Um, if I go back to the main page, again, you can see your portfolio here. Right now, I've only got 18 bucks in US dollars in this account. Um, but let's go back to that trading page. So again, let's say I wanted to buy one whole Bitcoin, and I need twenty one thousand three hundred dollars. If I was to buy this pair, I would be buying one whole Bitcoin for twenty one thousand three hundred sixty one dollars. And then let's say it went up to over the next couple of weeks, let's say Bitcoin went up to thirty thousand dollars. I could then sell that same Bitcoin back for US dollars. And now I would have thirty thousand US dollars. And that's a small example of a trade that you can do on this trade pair. Um, so they have a bunch of different trade pairs here. Um, you're mostly going to be using USDT. A lot of people like to trade against Bitcoin, but but um, let me talk about USDT. These four things here, these are what they call stable coins. So if you have US dollars in your account, USD itself is not a cryptocurrency. That is literally just US dollars loaded into your account. USDT, however, is a cryptocurrency and it's something they call a stable coin. Now that's something you'll hear a lot in the cryptocurrency industry. A stable coin is a cryptocurrency that stays tethered to the exact value of one US dollar. So it doesn't fluctuate in value. So a lot of times if you're day trading, um, um, or you're closing out your day, you want to put everything back into US dollar tether, um, because US dollar tether does not fluctuate in value. So let's say you made that trade I was talking about, let's say you bought one Bitcoin at $21,000, and then you sold it at $30,000. And you moved it back into US dollar tether. Now, if you just leave that US dollar tether there, your portfolio is going to stay at exactly $30,000, because it's a stable coin, it doesn't move up or down in value. If you're a long term crypto holder, there's really no point to holding stable coins, because again, they don't fluctuate in value. Um, um, but if the market is crashing, uh, let's say Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, everything else is going down and you see a market crash coming, you could tether out. And by tethering out, I mean sell your coins for US dollar tether to ensure that your portfolio balance doesn't go down. And then at the dip or at the bottom, you could buy back in later. Again, these are kind of like advanced day trading topics that we'll talk about in later videos. But I'm just trying to get you guys to understand these trade pairs here. So let me go to the USDT. Let's go Bitcoin slash USDT. So again, if we were on this 
this trade pair and we were to buy it, we are buying Bitcoin with US dollar tether, or if we were to sell it, we are selling Bitcoin for US dollar tether. Now, again, like I mentioned, you can trade against Bitcoin because another way to look at these trading pairs, let me go to mana versus Bitcoin. Another another way you can look at these trade pairs is that if you're to buy this trade pair, mana versus Bitcoin, you would be buying again, you'd be buying mana with Bitcoin, or if you were selling, you'd be selling mana for Bitcoin. And some people prefer to trade against Bitcoin because uh, let's say you bought mana and mana increased against the price of Bitcoin. You could then sell your mana and then you would profit Bitcoin instead of US dollar tether because tether doesn't move in value, but Bitcoin does. So some people prefer to trade against Bitcoin because you can make uh, you're making profit in Bitcoin. And then if Bitcoin's still rising, you're making profit again on the back end. So you're basically making double profit by uh, making profit off the trade. And then you're still making profit if Bitcoin's going up. But let's say you're trading against Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin was going down, you wouldn't want to sell back out into Bitcoin if it's going down, because then your portfolio is going to go down. So uh, there's two different ways you can trade. Uh, you know, you can trade against Bitcoin on US on Binance US, or you can trade against US dollar tether. Um, for this video, I'm just going to kind of keep it against US dollar tether because it's just a little easier to understand. Um, so let's look at another example here. Let me open up another coin. Um, let's open up the sand coin. This is the sandbox metaverse coin. Right now, one sand coin is worth about 90 cents, right? Um, almost a dollar. And again, if we're looking at this pair, all it means is we're buying Sandcoin with US dollar tether, or if we're selling it, we're selling Sandcoin for US dollar tether. So again, you can see all your different trade pairs in here. Um, I'm on top gainers right now. You can see this Lazio coin is up 41% in the last 24 hours. One way to look at it is let's say you were again, let's go back to this Bitcoin versus USDT chart. Another way to look at it is that if you bought this pair, you were basically betting that the value of Bitcoin is going to rise against the value of US dollar tether. Or if you sold it, you're betting that the, the value of Bitcoin is going to fall against the value of US dollar tether. So that's kind of a quick overview of what these trade pairs mean. I know it's a little bit confusing. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, but now we are going to be going over the time frames and candlestick charts. So right now I'm on the one week time frame. That's what this one W means. They have a one month time frame where each one of these candlesticks and each one of these candlesticks like this green line here, this is considered one one candlestick that's one candlestick this is another one and if we're on the one month time frame up here this each candle represents one month in time if we go to the weekly chart each candle represents one week in time if we go down to the one minute chart which is the 1m uh, you can see that each one of these little tiny candlesticks and you can click and drag up here on the Y axis to make the candlesticks taller or shorter. And then you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to um, zoom out that direction. And then you can click and drag around your screen. And if you're having trouble with this, make sure you're on this trading view tab, not the original tab. So again, if we're on the one minute chart, each one of these little candlesticks represents one minute in time. Now, one thing you need to understand, there are two different types of candlesticks, right? There are green candlesticks candlesticks, which are increasing, which they call a bullish candlestick. And then there is a red candlestick, which is decreasing, which is what they call a bearish candlestick. So if we're looking at a green bullish candlestick, basically what it means is that let's assume we're on the one day time chart. Now, depending on what time zone you're in, your candlestick might, um, you know, start at a different time. For me, every day at 6 p.m. is when a new candlestick forms. So let's say, let's say today at 6 p.m. on this bullish candlestick, there's this wide region and then there's this skinny region here that they call wicks or tails. And basically at the beginning of the day at 6 p.m., this is where the price started at. Now, during that day, the price may have dipped a little bit and that that creates the low, which is this wick. And then still during that same day, you know, overnight it rose, it got all the way up to here. And then at exactly 6 p.m., 24 hours later, it, the price closed right there. And then a new candlestick would form. So that's an example of a bullish candlestick. Again, at 6 p.m., it started here, may have moved down throughout the day, moved up. And then the next day later, exactly 24 hours later, that's where it finished. Now it's the exact opposite for a bearish candlestick. So if we have the red candlestick at the beginning of the day at 6 p.m., this is where the price started and then during the day it might have rose a little bit higher came all the way down here created that wick came back up and then 24 hours later closed right there so bullish bearish candlesticks so if we go back to our chart here and let me open up the weekly chart um, zoom out a little bit here so let's look at one of these candlesticks let's look at 
let's see here. Here is a good uh, bullish candlestick. So again, this was uh, October 11th of 2021, and we're on the one week chart. So at the beginning of this week, and for for and for crypto, the week starts on Sunday. So for, again, for me, uh, depending on what time zone you're in, it's going to be different. But at 6 p.m. every Sunday is when a new weekly candle forms. So this would be Sunday at 6 p.m., and then this next candlestick would open at exactly 6 p.m. the next Sunday. So if we're looking at this green bullish candlestick here during the week, Bitcoin started here at about $54,600. And during that week, it may have moved down a little bit. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it may have came all the way up here. And then by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it ended the week right there. So during that week, you can see if I do this date and price range here, you can see that if you were to trade that week and you made that trade, Bitcoin increased about 12.5% um, during one week. Um, so again, the exact opposite for bearish candles. So uh, let's look at this one right here during this week. And as you can see, the 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 opens and closes are always going to line up um, because this is where the, this week ended. And then the next week started right here at the top of this red thick portion. And then again, during that week, it looks like it increased Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it went all the way up here, created this wick, came back down Friday, Saturday. And then by Sunday, it closed here, creating a bearish candle. So you can see during that week, it went all the way up, back down, and then boom, exactly seven days later, it closed right there. So that's an example of what the bearish and bullish candles look like. And again, we're on the one week right here. So if I went to like even the one hour chart, each one of these candlesticks represents one hour in time. And again, I'm going to need to kind of zoom out here so I can see. But again, same thing here, bullish and bearish candles, but each candle represents one hour in time. So depending on whether you're like a long term holder or if you're just doing some technical analysis or you're a day trader, you might be using different time frames. I never really go into like the one minute time frame because there's just too much information going on and you can't really identify trends because it's over such a short period of time. But if you're on like the weekly chart, you can see some very obvious trends and trend lines and supports and resistance are something we're going to go over in future videos. But let me just show you a quick example um, up here at the top of the you know market Bitcoin was around it was around you know almost sixty nine thousand dollars so if we were to draw a trend line here from the top of that we can see that we've been on an obvious downward trend now we have been moving sideways uh, for the last couple of months Bitcoin's been kind of holding right around that twenty thousand dollar mark and again I'm not gonna get too far into trends support and resistance in today's video this is just a basic overview of what this candlestick chart means and all these time frames so you do have drawing tools over here you can use the brush tool you can use the text tool you can type and you can make notes here um, you can do all sorts of things you can draw you can draw straight lines you can draw um, trend lines all sorts of things you can make them thicker change the colors all sorts of stuff um, and again this is all technical analysis stuff that we're going to be going over in future videos but i'm going to go ahead and remove all these again and just go back to our basic candlestick charts again you have your trade pair here so if you're coming into binance the first thing you're going to need to do is if you wanted to pull up some charts and do some charting you're going to need to first pick your pick your coin so let's try a different one this time we were on bitcoin let's go to ethereum versus us dollar tether and then you're going to want to look at your time frames. And typically, I like to do top down analysis uh, is what I call it. So you would start at like the one month chart. So you can see on a monthly trend, Ethereum last year was on a very nice upward trend. And now over the past, you know, six to 10 months, we've obviously been on a downward trend. If we go to the weekly chart, we'll get a little bit more information where we can see a little bit more inside of here, you go down to the one day chart. Now we get even more information. And this is where you can start to see different trends, breaks of support and resistance and that sort of thing. OK, so uh, pretty easy. That's your trade pairs, time frames and candlestick charts. Uh, they do also have this depth chart here, which is a little bit confusing to understand. But basically what this is showing is this is the current price right here, right in the middle. Um, Sixteen thousand thirty dollars right now is what Ethereum's worth. You can see the X axis down here rises in price as we go to the right and the X axis lowers in price as we go here to the left. And then this red line gets higher and higher and higher. And basically what this is showing, the red is showing the sell orders that people have already already put in so you can see that as ethereum rises there's more people looking to sell as the price gets higher and these this is what the order book is and we'll go over the order book in the next video um, but this is just showing where people are looking to sell so you can kind of see there's more there's more buying demand as ethereum gets lower versus there is selling demand as it gets higher so people are looking to buy as this gets as this drops because right now at the current time of filming we are kind of at a low in the market so you can see as the price gets closer and closer to the current price you know that's market stabilization 
position right there where it stays. But then as the price gets higher, people are looking to sell or as the price gets lower, people are looking to buy again, a little bit confusing, but I don't really use the depth, the depth chart that often I mostly just stick here on the main candlestick chart. So that's basically a quick overview of again, first, you have to pick your trade pair. Then you pick your time frame, and then you can go ahead and look at the candlesticks within the chart. In the next video, we're going to be going over this whole right side of the screen. This is your order book. Um, this is the order book history. And then we're going to show you guys how to actually buy or sell, place limit, market, and stop limit orders. So that will be in next week's video. But today was just a quick overview of all of that information. So I know it was a lot of information. So if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, and we will make sure to answer them. If you guys learned anything from this video, um, please make sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure to also subscribe so you can catch all of our future content. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time.